Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are going to examine one of the most enduring mysteries that this series has ever offered us. One that has affected the world in ways we cannot yet even comprehend, being of course, the Void Century. Although this time period is still far from a complete question mark to us, and as readers and watchers over the course of One Piece, we have been granted several tantalizing insights, so here is everything we know about the Void Century. The Void Century represents a complete gap in recorded history, said to have occurred roughly eight to 900 years ago in the modern timeline. I should say at this stage that the Void Century may also be known by other terms such as the Blank Century, if you watch the Funimation subs, or even the 100 Year Void, which is the official Viz manga translation. Doesn't quite have that same sort of snappy oomph though. But this was a very formative time for the world and its events are not shrouded in secrecy by sheer accident, like say some kind of historical mishap. Rather, these records and events have been deliberately expunged and even destroyed by the current ruling body of the planet, being the world government, who rather conveniently conveniently appeared to have formed immediately after the conclusion of the Void Century. Weird coincidence there, eh? And you know what else is weird coincidence? You, all of a sudden having the desire to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, mostly because doing so would grant you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed, and perhaps even the answer to life, the universe, and just everything. That is the phenomenal potential of this button. But despite the world government's best efforts, they were certainly not able to completely wipe the century away because logs of it do still exist in the form of 30 poneglyphs scattered throughout the world. And nine poneglyphs in particular, which are collectively labeled as the Rio poneglyph, contain the lost history of this world. Although allegedly one does require the information from all nine to hold a complete picture. A task which is pretty difficult to say the least, because not only are these poneglyphs hidden exceptionally well throughout the One Piece planet, primarily within the Grand Line and the New World, but they also happen to be written in the ancient language. Something that 900 years on has been forgotten by the world at large. And in fact, Nico Robin is said to be the only person currently alive who is able to read it. Although there are other potential and unconfirmed methods to extract Poneglyph information, such as those who possess the very vaguely defined ability to hear the voice of all things, or by a member of the Three-Eyed Tribe achieving an awakening. Both of these methods, once again, are highly speculative though. But in regards to other Poneglyphs, they also serve a grand purpose in providing information and even the location of the three ancient weapons, all of which are heavily implied to be a key aspect of the Void Century. And this whole idea is used by the world government as the primary reasoning behind forbidding the study of this time period due to the fear of these weapons being revived and throwing the world into turmoil. But exactly how much truth is in that thought? Well, we'll find out shortly. Although as a result of more recent times, we do at least now know where Poneglyphs came from to begin with, as they appear to have been constructed on Wano, meaning that this island of isolated samurai likely played a very key role in the events of the Void Century, which is also implied to have been the reasoning behind their modern day isolationist policy. Basically, something happened during this mysterious time period that caused Wano to shut itself off from the world, although none of its currently living residents have any idea why. But in that respect, Wano would almost certainly be connected to one of the most intriguing aspects of the Void Century, which is the existence of the Great Kingdom. Now, prior to the planet being ruled over by the world government, the Great Kingdom was said to be the dominant body. And this kingdom was first brought to our attention by a certain Professor Clover, who led a band of scholars secretly studying the Void Century on the island of Ohara. And the amount of information this group of people managed to uncover is pretty staggering. And they even came to form their own hypothesis regarding why the world government engaged in this course of action. As such, in the words of Professor Clover, it appears they once had enormous power, but all information about this kingdom has been relentlessly erased. It is probable these people understood they would be destroyed by this alliance of nations, later called the world government. And as such, they carved the truth of their existence onto pieces of stone, which survived to this day. Without a doubt, the so-called ancient weapons could destroy destroy this world. However, more importantly, history will reveal that the very existence and idea of this kingdom is in fact what the world government finds most threatening. We still don't know the nature of this threat, but the key is the ancient kingdom and its name is. And then Clover was unfortunately promptly shot before he could state the name. Afterwards, the entire island of Ohara was destroyed and its people mercilessly massacred in a genocide. There was but one survivor, a young girl named Nika Robin, who carries the inherited will of this land along with her. But unfortunately, she was not privy to the conclusion that Professor Clover and the other scholars came to. But this act by the world government does essentially prove Clover's hypothesis because they were afraid to even have the name of this kingdom stated aloud. So the world government, and I suppose the five elder stars in particular, hold a deeply rooted fear, not just of history and legacy being revealed, but of the discovery of a basic idea, which is just fascinating. And a lot of this is going to be intrinsically linked to a key event that occurred during the Void Century, which is known currently to us as the Great War. And of course, 
course, as you would expect, the Great Kingdom made up one side of this conflict, and they were opposed by various smaller kingdoms. In fact, 20 monarchies around the world joined forces to create the Ancient Alliance, which included some very familiar names, such as the Nefertari clan of Alabasta and the Don Quixote line who ruled over Dressrosa. And with their combined might, the 20 kingdoms would appear to have proven victorious, managing to overthrow the Great Kingdom and pave the way for the world as we know it today. Because after the conclusion of this war and thus the Void Century, these kingdoms would stay together and form the world government, with each kingdom's royalty being invited to live on the exclusive land of Marajois and become world nobles. An offer that we know the Don Quixote ancestors took up, thus leading to the Riku dynasty inheriting Dressrosa, although the Nefertari clan would refuse this offer, which is why they still retain control over Alabasta to this day. And as for why that is, uh, it's a bit of a tricky thing. Alabasta in particular sits in a very, very strange place when it comes to this whole void century business, because as stated before, they were one of the founding parties that opposed the Great Kingdom. At the same time though, the nation of Alabasta appears to have been trusted with a poneglyph detailing the location of the ancient weapon Pluton, which would imply that they may have had something of a sneaky alliance or at least friendly relationship with the Great Kingdom. The theory being that if Alabasta was a true world government loyalist nation, then this simply would have been handed over to the world government who would still to this day have control over Pluton, something that they were actively seeking as we saw during the Water 7 saga. And Alabasta is not the only speculated ally of the Great Kingdom because we also have the civilization of Shandor, who were given a poneglyph to guard containing the location of the ancient weapon Poseidon. And this stone was of course housed in the golden city of Shandor, which apparently collapsed as a result of the Great War. However, its inhabitants still continue to protect it for the next 800 years, even once it was blasted up into Skypea via the knock-up stream. The Great Kingdom is not the only renowned name in the Void Century though, and we do know of at least two living beings from this time period. The first of which is known only to us as Joy Boy. And thus far, his story is known to us, is primarily linked to the aforementioned ancient weapon Poseidon. Although this does appear to be something of a tragic tale, with Joy Boy being forced to break his promise to the ancient residents of Fishman Island for as of yet unknown reasons. But this whole affair does also involve the massive construct that is the Noah, and assumedly involves the plan to migrate the Fishman Island race to the surface world. And here we're going to have a brief spoiler warning. If you are not caught up with the manga, by which I mean Act 3 of Wano at the time of this recording, then please do skip to this time in the video. We're going to be very brief here, but we do have some massive information nonetheless. So go on and do your thing, but for everyone else who was caught up or simply just doesn't care, well then here we go. Rather shockingly, Joy Boy is far, far more connected to this world and indeed this story than Fishman Island would have conveyed to us at the time. And at this stage, he has been confirmed to us to have been the individual who left the quote unquote treasure behind on Laugh Tale, which has now become known as the One Piece. A factor that the Pirate King Goldie Roger and his crew were well aware of, having pieced together the history of the world through the various poneglyphs and upon discovering this treasure, they simply laughed. But speaking of, oddly enough, it would not be a band of scholars who uncovered the true depths of the Void Century, but rather a band of misfit pirates led by Goldie Roger. During their journey, they discovered everything there is to know about the Void Century, but came to the conclusion that there was nothing they could do about this information. Not yet, anyway. In fact, when Nico Robin confronted Silvis Rayleigh, the first mate of the Roger Pirates, he had this to say on the matter of the Void Century. Don't get ahead of yourself. Take it one step at a time. It would seem that we and those of O'Hara were too hasty. Even if I told you everything right now, there is nothing that you could do about it. You will see everything one day, and the answer you arrive at may be quite different from ours. Which does paint a uh, quite a bleak picture of the journey of the Roger Pirates, going to all of that trouble to uncover everything, and ultimately being completely unable to do anything. Because even the Pirate King was powerless against the winds of fate that began blowing during the Void Century. Which is undoubtedly a major factor in why Roger did what he did by turning himself into the Marines and starting the Golden Age of Piracy, very sneakily calling attention to the Void Century by promising a grand treasure. And this is a legacy that still very much continues to to this day, because one other major thing that we have not discussed yet is the important link between the Void Century and those who are subject to the Will of D. Because whilst we do not know exactly how yet, these figures are the key pillars of fate and inherited will, perhaps even being the descendants of the people of the Great Kingdom itself. But there is something incredibly and undeniably special about them, as was made clear with the final words of Whitebeard. You can sever their bloodlines, but their flames will never be extinguished. It has been passed down like this since the ancient times. Someday one will arise who will challenge the world and shoulder centuries of history. You and the world government fear the great war that will come to this world one day. I'm not interested in the treasure, but when it is found, the whole world will be turned upside down and someone will find it. That day will come. The One Piece 
does exist. Which is very, very intriguing because that now makes clear that the events of the Void Century don't just have insightful bearing on how we got where we are in this timeline, but also how we are going to proceed in the future. The concept of a great war was not something that was fought and won or fought and lost, depending on your perspective, all those centuries ago. But it is in fact something that is coming to this planet with the resurgence of the information lost in the Void Century. Now, earlier on in the video, I mentioned that we knew of at least two figures who lived through the Void Century. The first of which was, of course, Joy Boy. But the second is a much more familiar person being Kozuki Toki, who was able to travel into the comparatively more modern times through the use of the Toki Toki no Mi. So she came all the way from the Void Century, having been born roughly 830 years prior to the present day, with the one clear mission of wanting to visit Wano. And whilst Toki was very clearly aware of profound information, or at least what Odin knew, it is currently unknown how much more insight she actually has into the time period that she came from, making her the latest in a long line of delicious sub-mysteries regarding the Void Century, all of which have the amazing ability to just spark curiosity and the desire to learn more, as well as remain invested in One Piece as a whole. Because in the great words of Professor Clover, the past belongs to all mankind. No one has the power to suppress the desire to learn about a history that is not yet known. And that would be everything we know about the Void Century. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do feel free to go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.